Now, I want to introduce something brand new to you here. Uh, if you were on the Coffee Corner last week, you may have seen a brief mention of this from Derek. I want to get into a little more detail on it. There are some new expressions added to the very soon to be released 2022 release two software that'll allow you to get at corridor and surface template information. So you can put these on your mesh elements and they will return information from that corridor, uh, from that through to that mesh that come from the corridor that generated it. Number one, the name of the corridor, the horizontal and vertical alignment names that created it, the template drop that was used, the start and end stations of that template drop. Now on these three here, you do pass in a parameter and that parameter is for which template drop you're on. So if you pass in a parameter of zero, that's gonna give you the first template drop. A parameter of one is the next template drop, parameter of two is the template drop after that. So you can return information for multiple template drops as well. The last piece that's on here is something called mesh length. What this allows you to do is put this on the, the corridor and return a length of that mesh based on a particular template point. So think about, and let's just jump over here and look at the software a little bit. Think about a curb here as an example. And if I zoom out a little bit, you'll see that this geometry is not straight, you know, neither horizontally or vertically. It's real world kind of a situation. So if I wanted to measure the length of this curb, it's going to be different at the toe of the curb, at the flow line of the curb, at the back of the curb, depending on which point I'm measuring. So what this property allows you to do, and this is this mesh length here, is I can pass in the name of the point. In this case, I'm passing in this curb back top left point that I have that makes up that mesh and it will compute along that location. If I wanted to compute it along my uh, toe or my front of the curb here, along the EOP left, I could do that. So if I change this to EOP left, as I hit tab here, if you watch that 3D length, it will change in value because it is slightly different measured here than it is back here. So it allows you to control where you measure that off of. Similarly, you can get at information off of surface templates, including the surface template name that was used and the terrain that was used to build that surface template. Again, those are brand new. Those will be coming in the soon to be released 22 release two software. Now I wanna spend a minute, um, we get a, quite a few questions around just how do if statements work and, and people struggling with some of the logic in there so I wanted to spend a minute and kind of look at, at an if expression. Uh, they are you know, relatively easy to use. Uh, the first is you pass in the test expression, a comma, and then what you want to happen if that's true, a comma, and what you want to happen if it's false. Now here's kind of a realistic expression here. So let's look at what I'm passing in. Well, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna test my offset at the start to some reference alignment and see if it's less than zero. So I'm testing to see if I'm on the left or the right side of the road. If it's less than zero, I'm on the left. So that's gonna be true. I'm gonna do the blue stuff. So at the heart of this, what I'm doing is I'm going in and computing my civil expression offset start from that reference alignment. But then I'm wrapping around that a system function to turn that into an absolute value because I don't want the plus minus signs on it. So now I'm taking that value that is an absolute value, just a pure distance, and I'm applying some formatting to it. The formatting that I'm applying to it is just a 0.00, .00 so I'm going to get two decimal places. But I'm also going to add the characters LT period at the end of it. So I will get the number, but LT0 at the end of it. Instead of just a minus 10 feet, I'll get 10 LT0. If that expression is false, then I'll process the orangish kind of text here, which is exactly the same, except I'm putting a different characters on the end of this. So here I'm using the format string, not only to format the, the value, but I'm also passing it some static text to include in there when it's presenting that data. 
Now, the next one that I want to cover is something that um, is floating around out there. Uh, some people have started trying to use this function. It's called Get Related Instance. Uh, I've even seen things posted on Bentley Communities and some other locations out there of users finding creative ways to use this and suggesting it as a solution. What I want to kind of share with you today is to correct that a little bit and encourage you, strongly encourage you not to use this function. Uh, this function does exist in there and it was built for the CAD level, the microstation level kind of data and it works pretty well for that. The problem with the civil data is it is much more complex, the data to navigate through, the relationships that exist in there. And in particular, we've got relationships that don't all live in one model. Think about your 2D model, your 3D model, your profile models, and the relationships that have to exist between those. And even the examples that I've seen where people have to a degree been successful with getting this uh, related instance to return some of the data that they want. Um, we've also looked at those and we do know that those are not gonna work in all situations. That's one of the problems with this is because of the multiple models we're dealing with and stuff and the relationships, you really cannot navigate through them with this tool. The solution to that is we need to be using purpose-built civil expressions instead for that. And if I back up two slides, these are a very uh, perfect example of why we've done, why we built these. This is a place where uh, we saw people trying to navigate to this data through those get related instances, which do work in some cases, but won't work in all. What we've built for you are some functions that are A, much easier for you to use, and are more reliable to use because they are built to work in all functions because we can more properly navigate through those relationships and return the right data. The other piece that I will say about the get related instance function is it is very, very slow. So you're gonna see a tremendous performance hit if you do include this or include this very much within your files versus using purpose-built expressions. So if you do find other things that you think this is the solution for, that you don't have an expression, please let us know so we can look at incorporating those expressions for you into there and giving you a performant way to do that. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.